AI is the foundation of our discovery engine and our ads business while improving our user experience. AI-based ranking, computer vision, and language translation has drastically changed how we built and deployed services across all of our apps. So advancing AI, building into every one of our products, as well as enabling many new products and services, is critical to our future. It's evolving, so it's pretty complex for data centers. Hi, I'm Alan. People call me AD, Director of Engineering for Data Centers. I've been with Meta for nine years, but I've dedicated my entire career to designing and constructing data centers. Something about creating an idea, drawing it on paper, conceptualizing it, creating blueprints, and actually seeing it physically constructed coming to life. And along the way, I get to work with thousands of amazing people in our industry to make it happen. Nothing better than that. So we're going to continue to make AI happen in our data centers. Newer AI technology calls for new hardware. Our new hardware needs a new home. That new home is our next-gen data center design. Our next-gen design will enable AI technology for today and for future generations. But also, more importantly, we need to plan for roughly 4x scale. So how do we do that? How do we plan for the scale? Scaling is not new for us. We've done it before. As you can see in this graphic, since 2010, we've scaled our infrastructure by over 10x. It all started out as a growth journey. We experienced exponential user growth and engagement. We had to rethink our approach to our infrastructure stack, meaning how do we control our own destiny? We believe that innovation requires a full technical stack approach. What that means is we develop our own products, our own software. We're in the business of going to develop our own hardware, network, and building our own data centers. So a resilient and portable software that sat on an open, modular, and disaggregated hardware was the approach that led to super efficient data center design. So the image you see on the left is a napkin sketch. And this was an example of engineers from the hardware team and the data center team got together to design a fully integrated power distribution system that led to a world-class efficient data center design. In 2009, we completed our very first data center build in Prineville, Oregon. That build was 38% more efficient to build and 24% less expensive to run than any of our previous facilities. In 2014, we quickly surpassed a billion users. This was right around the time that I joined the company. Needless to say, we had to scale our infrastructure exponentially by a factor of 10x. We called that the wall. So our foundation was strong. Our design was simple, repeatable, with world-class energy efficiency. Basically, we were asked to just do what we're really good at, just a lot more of it. In 2018, a slight wrench was thrown into the mix. It was a new design, a new network design specifically, to support disaggregated flash that, how can I simply put it, broke our first-gen design. So we had to redesign the data center, but we had to redesign it in mind with jobs that were in, in flight, in the middle of a construction. We had to rethink of this design for our existing fleet and how we can reconfigure it for future projects without really breaking it all apart. In the same theme of change in 2020, we set some new goals, and those goals were to reach net zero emission for our entire value chain by 2030. So again, more change that drove change into our current design. In 2022, additional change hit us, and that change was to be water positive, which means our company will restore more water than we consume for our global operations. So. With all that change, with all that growth, that resulted in 12 plus years of building world-class data centers. We landed on scale and more importantly, a homogeneous infrastructure. The uniformity provided us the ability to rapidly deploy and efficiently maintain our global fleet. So here we are today, different set of requirements, but in my opinion, similar challenges. 
We're experiencing growth in AI tech. We need to make sure that our data center can adapt to something that's still evolving, so all that change. And we need to scale it by 4x, roughly. So for the rest of the talk, I'm going to walk us through how we enable 4x through innovation, efficiency, while meeting our goals and commitments that we've made for sustainability. So it all starts with innovation. AI is relatively new and is still evolving. I've said that a couple of times now. And really, it just makes innovating in data center design really complex. I often ask myself, like, how do we balance our design around what we know today versus how much we should plan for or how much we should future proof? So, for example, over the next four years, we may see a one and a half to two times growth in power consumption per accelerator and roughly one and a half time for high bandwidth memory. This evolution is all happening as we're planning to break ground on our first next gen data center like today or this year. And so if we're just starting on construction for that data center, by the time we're done, we might be obsolesced. In addition to that, depending on what our services and products will need, we can see smaller scaled clusters of a thousand accelerators to potentially 30,000 plus for much larger jobs. Each of these configurations, as well as the accelerator that we utilize, will require a slightly different approach to hardware and network systems designs. So the data center will need to accommodate for all this. So here's how we're thinking about it. Data center design innovation, we need to focus on flexibility for long-term compatibility and scale in deployment. So it starts with the building design, as well as some power distribution components. We have to enable co-location of server and network hardware. So in the case of AI training, the server, which are built around accelerators, and the network system operate as one if we're looking to scale it up or down. So there's a dependency in the co-location of this equipment. And depending on our products and services, that all changes, that could change. So enabling shared physical infrastructure for these two types of hardware is gonna be really important for us if we're gonna plan for flexibility or fungibility. This also enables efficiency in our fiber deployment because we need a significant of fiber to interconnect these servers. So co-locating them closer together will allow us to gain some efficiencies there. And when I think about it, adding this flexibility within the white space itself still enables a homogeneous approach to data center deployment and operations. So it gives us some flexibility there from that perspective as well. Server type flexibility. These servers are going to require different types of cooling. That means that as we think about our new design, we're developing cooling systems that'll support 100% air cooling, as well as a large percentage of liquid cooling. This allows us to support and continue to support the traditional service today, like compute and storage. It also allows us to support the first generation of, of Meta's AI-enabled hardware, as well as any future enabled hardware. Delivering power infrastructure closer to the server rack will be simpler and more efficient with our new design. We're eliminating as much equipment as possible through our power distribution chain. So as you can see from the graphic, we're eliminating the low voltage switch gear that creates a, what you might, you might wanna call a bottleneck of capacity. Eliminating that allows us to, you know, allows the, the server rack to grow in density in the future with minor modifications to our infrastructure and it continues to allow for greater power utilization. So we pride ourselves on world-class power utilization. And today, you know, we, we're utilizing roughly 70 plus percentage of the power that we deploy. What does that mean? It means that we strand less power and it eventually means we build less data centers, which is all good, makes us more efficient. So innovation to enable flexibility and scale, that's important. But 
efficiency in our design has always been core to our business. Ultra flexibility, future proofing, requirements for both air and water cooling doesn't do us any favors in power efficiency or reducing costs or deploying data centers faster. So we had to make some trade-offs as we progressed through the design. So over the last year, there's a couple examples that I'll share with you. We've had to make some trade-offs. So when you think about liquid to chip cooling, that's important for us to enable future generations of AI. But deploying too much too early is inefficient. In our design, we've already made a wholesale shift to facility water, and we've created these AI scaling units, as I previously shared. But for efficiency, we're going to only deploy a small percentage of liquid to chip cooling on day one, and we'll scale it up as we need. This means more complex upfront rack placement and planning. We we've haven't had to do that in the past, so this is a much very complicated process for us. But it allows us to save some capital, right? It allows us to deploy faster. Less equipment means we can, we can build this thing faster. And it limits the unnecessary maintenance of equipment that become unused. We're going to continue to lean into our software resiliency and some hardware buffer versus relying too heavily on physical sort of resiliency like we do in the industry. This allows us to right-size our physical backup infrastructure, like using fewer diesel generators, saving time in deployment, again, less equipment, less time, and it reduces emissions and, 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 and it continues to make our operations more efficient. But the risk is this means that we're going to take on some unknown risk associated with software for our AI workloads. We're still learning about that as we're deploying this in scale. And so as we learn more, we might adjust our strategy. Increase in power usage to enable water neutrality in liquid cooling. So when you think about it, liquid cooling doesn't come for free. We can't simply just open our windows and rely on free air cooling anymore. We can't keep leveraging evaporation to reject heat because that will continue to be a challenge for us as we go into regions that are water constrained and as we continue to scale out our operations. So this will mean that we'll be using a little bit more power to cool our equipment. But on the flip side, we'll reduce our water consumption. So with all these trade-offs, and there's many, many more trade-offs that I can share that I don't have time for, but where did we land? We anticipate that our next-gen data center will be 31% more cost-effective, and we're going to be able to build it two times faster for a complete full region when you compare that to our current generation data center. So these are all tough trade-offs that we've had to make and we'll continue to make decisions on a site-by-site -site case based on the constraints we have. So this leads me to our continual commitment to sustainability. We've committed already to reaching net zero across our value chain by 2030. We continue to support 100% of our operations with renewable energy and we've committed to reach water positivity by 2030. To date, we've restored 2.2 million cubic meters of water. So how does our next gen design contribute to this? Well, number one is just use less material. Less is more. That's the easy button. That's why I colored that green, right? Just press the easy button, right? Use less, design for smaller. Think about a region that is significantly smaller than what we have today. That means just less equipment, less underground infrastructure. Deeper supplier engagement. So drive for greater supply chain transparency in developing shared goals uh, and shared emission targets with our suppliers. We committed to 20, we committed to net zero by 23 across our entire supply chain. That means everything, every component that goes into our data center. And then lastly, but not least, switch to low carbon alternative materials. For example, we see a ton of opportunities in concrete. Prior to our new design, by 2030, our emissions footprint measured in metric ton carbon dioxide equivalent was projected to grow by roughly 3x. Just follow that dotted line to the right. Just by using less as a first step, our next-gen design is tracking roughly 75%
less carbon intensive. So as we continue to progress our design, explore alternative materials, and engage deeper with our suppliers, we're confident that the data center will do its part in helping us reach our goals. So in close, AI tech continues to evolve at a rapid pace. Flexibility in design is key for long-term success. Balancing trade-offs between efficiency, compatibility, with a continued commitment to our sustainability goals is key. Lastly, the journey is only 1% finished. We will continue to innovate and evolve our design and drive for greater efficiency while enabling future generations of AI technology. Thank you.